Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Hey, before this uh, video actually starts, I just wanted to talk to you guys for a minute. I went ahead and built the model as I normally would and showed how it goes together because this is a great model for new and uh, new guys to armor, new guys to modeling, and in general. So it's a it's a great all around kit. At the end, when I went to paint it, we started painting some unusual ways, just having fun. It was supposed to be a total joke and having fun, but I thought I would kind of mention to that going in. So the build portion of it is just a regular thing, but then we started painting some crazy paint jobs on the on the end of the video. So I just thought I would tell you that because sometimes when we deviate from our regular plan, uh, some people get upset and stuff, but just just take it with a grain of salt. It was just for fun. So, But the kit is an excellent kit, and I would highly advise if you're looking for something unusual to build, this is the one for it. So on with the show. Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new build to share with you guys today, and this is for the brand new 35th scale PL01 Polish Light Prototype Tank. And just by looking at the box art, as you can see right here, this is something totally different, uh, you know, armor-wise, than we've done in quite a while. And it has so many different types of, you know, ways we can paint this. I mean, we can paint it like the Polish Prototype Tank that they show on the box art right here. Or we could do it some kind of sci-fi look. We can make it super shiny and clean like a modern future where, you know, it's just with bright colors on it. Or we can make it all like a, a far off future where it's all chipped up and beat up. It's just so many different possibilities we can do with this tank and it's a really cool design. The second thing too, I'm going to definitely recommend this kit as a great starter kit for someone who is just starting out in armor. Because the part count is way low on it. It lets you kind of dip your foot in the pool, so to speak, when it comes to doing uh, individual track links because these are link and link tracks. They are a simple design to put together. There is a guide inside there that you can wrap your tracks around to get them into the perfect position. And also, based on the look of it right here, honestly, you don't have to build all the tracks. If you wanted to leave off all the top tracks, no one's ever gonna know because once you put those side skirts on, it completely covers over all of that. So there's lots of different ways you can do it so you can practice on it. The part count for the rest of the vehicle is very, very small, but very nicely done and accurate looking to what the, you know, the prototype is supposed to look like. So very excited about this one. And like I said, because it is designed for a, a beginner in a lot of respects, I think this would be perfect that for the guys who are like, eh, I don't want one of those 1200 part, you know, modern uh, tanks that we have to do. This one right here, this is under a hundred parts and you can honestly knock it together in, you know, a a day or two and then get to the fun part of painting and weathering if you decide you want to weather on it. So uh, very excited about this one. So let's get started. Okay guys, we've got the beginnings of the lower hull all cut out and starting to get ready to put together. And as you can see right here, the hull is a bathtub style hull. So all of this is molded as one big piece. All of this stuff too, all these little brackets and things are already molded into the actual lower hull. So I would definitely, if you're looking for a good starter kit, if you're new to this hobby, this would probably be a great, great model to start off with because the part count is very low. Tacom's got very good quality and everything fits together as well, as well really well. And I'm just going to go quickly over what the parts are in this. So in the back we have, we'll actually glue it in as we go. This is the, the idler wheel arm. And it can only go in one way, just like that, because of the little tabs. And that is true with all of the suspension arms. They've got that little tab there, which I'll actually just glue one in to show you and just like that you can't get it wrong it can only fit in the one position the wheels same thing you've got an A and B side of the wheel a little little glue inside there pop those two together you're ready to go now there's sanding which we've done on this already we went ahead and sanded all of the little burr off of each one the uh, 
drive sprocket, a little tiny drive sprocket on this thing too. It's very tiny. And A and B side for that. And the idler in the back, A and B side for that. So there are seven suspension arms for each side, plus the, the idler and drive sprocket one. And that, that is it. So it's very, very simple parts to put together and really nice looking detail. They did nice detail on all of the, uh, the road wheels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of this stuff glued together because this is pretty pretty simple and easy to do. And one, one question since we're talking about simple easy kits, a uh, few people have asked me on the, the site lately some basic tools. Now you guys know with what's happening in the world, uh, I'm actually doing a lot of these videos from home. And what I thought I would do is just real quick, I, I don't have my full complement of tools at home. but. I have enough here that we can get a nice job done on it. And one tool I definitely recommend, a good pair of sprue cutters. Now I use the Tamiya 7, uh, or the one, they're called 123s because that's the last three codes on it. And they're very, very fine blades and really sharp. Any good sprue cutters are going to work. I happen to like these the best because they are so sharp and you can get right up on the edge of the, the part and cut it off. You're going to need an X-Acto knife or some kind of number 11 knife a nice pair of diagonal tweezers and some sanding sticks and then of course glue and this is what I'm primarily building all the kits that I'm doing at home now there if you're gonna be doing something with photo etch or more elaborate type stuff you're gonna need different tools but these are the basics that honestly you can get you started in doing 90 percent of what most modelers are going to do so having said that we'll put that aside right now I'll get to work on the rest of this lower part of the hull and I'll come back and show you what it looks like so we can start the tracks. Okay guys, with the lower hull now assembled with all the wheels, we did leave the drive sprocket and the idler off and that is because they are, give you inside here a bracket that is going to help align and assemble the tracks. So you attach the drive sprocket right in here and there's a little pin in there to line it up perfectly and then the idler just snaps right into place right there. You don't want to glue those parts on. These are just temporary while we align the tracks. This is what each side of the tracks looks like right here. And we have long links of track and then individual pieces of track here as well. And I've, I'll show you how these go together, but I'm working on one side. And this is what they want you to come up with here. Make sure, make sure it dries in the right position as we're going around here too. And you'll get that type of look just like that. And we're letting that dry and then the, after you you'll pull all of that off and then attach the very bottom to it. So let me get these cut off and then I'll show you how these tracks turn from this into this. Okay, we've got all of the individuals and all the other pieces cut off the sprue. The only thing we want to do now is the two little burrs that are left behind will keep the track from fitting together properly. So making sure those are all laid down right. And now we are going to just take our tweezers and start to line the track up as they go, just like this. And as each one of those snap together, or almost snap together, put a, just a smallest amount of glue in between the crack. That should soften them enough and that'll get the track to start sticking together. Now there's a very small amount of connection points, so you wanna make sure they line up really well. And then a little bit of cement on there. And keeping, keeping an eye on the fact that if one starts to rise up like that one did right there, we wanna get them as flat as possible. So on this portion of, of the where it goes over the idler, we need six of those. So we're gonna glue six of those together right now. We're gonna let that set up for about five minutes so that they're still flexible, but the glue is not tacky, so it doesn't start gluing to the black plastic right here. So let's let that set up, and I'll show you the next step in a few minutes. Okay, these have had a few minutes to set up now. So we're going to take the first part of track that has a slight little bend into it. That's the only thing you had to just make sure you keep an eye on is that you're using the correct piece of track. There is a little tab right there that you want to lock the first full set of tracks into. Put just a little bit of cement down the line here. And making sure the tracks are going the right way, you plug 
those two together just like that. And because these are still soft, we can just wrap them right around. And we're gonna let them sit on this piece for a little bit of time to dry into that position. And they, they might flex out a little bit, but that's not gonna matter. You'll be able to actually flex them back into position. And then it's just a matter of going down the line. The next piece in after this sets up a little bit, we'll glue that into place, the next piece, and then the next longer piece, and the same thing. We wrap right around with all of that track. So it makes it very simple to put together. Now, you don't absolutely need to put this uh, this bracket on. You, I could easily assemble these tracks on here without this bracket. This is gonna make them a little bit easier if you wanna take them off to paint them, because then you have this position right here, and that's just easy enough to paint, and then just glue the, the bottom portion on, as you see right down there, and that'll lock right in. But it's up to you. There is so little of the track shown because of the way the side skirts go so far down on this vehicle, it's probably okay to go ahead and glue them into position and you won't even have to worry about painting them. It'll be easy to get in there with an airbrush and just paint the tracks themselves. So I'll finish this side up. We will uh, go ahead, pull this off and attach it, but I'll show you that once we're ready to do that. Okay, we're ready to put these into place here. Hopefully we measured it properly and did it right. I think it though, it's gonna go okay. I had a, a touch of problem getting the drive sprocket off because it's very, very tight on this. So you might wanna consider if you're gonna use this just to sand it ever so slightly, the nub, just to make it a little bit easier to get off when you go to do that. So now just line those two up, make sure the pins wrap right around in there. And then you can go ahead and glue the tracks down just like that. And then we can glue that piece. Yes. Yeah, that fits, yeah. And that is the way it's going to look right there. Actually, yeah, we do have to adjust it slightly. Okay, a second ago you watched me put the track on. It looked like I was having a little bit of tr trouble and that is because the top portion of track needs to be sagged all the way to the top of the road wheels. Without that extra sag, it's putting too much pressure on both sides and it's not making the track wanna line up properly. But once you glue the top down to the road wheels, you see everything lines up just the way it's supposed to. Okay, with the tracks and the lower suspension all assembled, we can go ahead and start to assemble the rest of the hull and first thing we're putting in are the little brackets for the that you would tow off of and the way they fit in is a little bit unusual compared to other vehicles then with that we can go ahead and glue the front part of the fender fenders Just like that. And the reason these go in that unusual way is because this is going to fit right over it, just like that. And flip this around, and this portion will get glued. like that. Okay, the next portion of the build would be to put the uh, the upper part of the hull on. One thing that I did leave out were all of these clear pieces that you get molded or glued into right here and into the front here. And I thought maybe there was a possibility that this would come off so we didn't have to paint or excuse me, mask around while we were going to paint, but it doesn't appear this appears it's going to have to be glued into place. So, I'm going to go ahead and attach all of the clear glass now because it's all mounted from the inside and then we'll have to just go and mask over it once we get it all glued together. So we'll get this glued in and then, then it's just a matter of dropping this top piece right into place and our upper hull is starting to get attached. And you're going to notice it's going to go together very, very quickly from this portion out because there's not that many more parts after this. So I'll be back once I get the glass in and the top glued on. We have the top glued into place. And we've also put the periscopes in for the driver. 
Now we're just putting the cover up on top there. And once that's on, we have our side pieces, which are all molded as one big piece. They're all braced up, ready to go. There are three little pins that you need to sand off that are just sticking out, but they're very, very minor. And then it'll be just a matter of locking that into position just like that. And there, obviously there's one for each side. So I'll go ahead and get those glued on now and we'll show you what it looks like once it's done. Give you a little tip as you're gluing this on. I used a little bit of super glue inside here. And then we're gonna run a slight little bead by flexing this out. And then we can close this up. Okay, you guys just watch this glue up the top and bottom of this barrel shaft as well as the front part of the barrel. We'll put a little glue on that. That'll slide right in there. We've got all that nice sanded smooth. We've also glued up, these were just four little parts that we glued together. This makes up, I'm assuming these look like part of the trophy system, like on a uh, Merkava tank. And these are going to get mounted right inside here. So it looks like they're uh, an anti-RPG device that would shoot it down before it hits the tank. So we'll mount those on in a few minutes. And now we're just going ahead and assembling the machine gun. And it's a remote control machine gun that they have on top here. So spread that apart and put that inside. There is quite a few little pieces that make up this gun. piece gets mounted on there then there's also the two little hand grips in the back that we'll put on after all this dries and then there's another mounting bracket here for the uh, ammunition and there was one other little uh, device that we glued up here with a clear front that we'll have to mask off as well that gets mounted on top of the vehicle <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna show you how all these last parts go together to make up the turret. So these are gonna slide right inside here. And then there's like a little, little cap on the other side. Put a touch of glue on that. And you'll pop it from the bottom down here. And that'll lock that and still allow it to turn. That is exactly the way the machine gun is going to be set up on top. It's got a tab that's gonna get glued right into place right that. That way the machine gun can be t rotated. And then finally, the barrel assembly snaps into place here. And then we will be able to go ahead and got to do a little bit of flexing on this top piece to get it to flex in. And just go ahead and glue on that just like it is. And then it's ready to put onto the hull. Okay guys, here is our built up model. Now, what I went ahead and did is sprayed the entire thing with NATO black for a couple reasons. First, it's kind of our shadow coat for whatever paint job we put on underneath it. Also, we wanted to make sure we didn't have any uh, flubs in the plastic, which I had to go back and repair a few of them where we didn't sand properly enough and the black really shows it off. Also, on all these little glass pieces, we did cover them over with a liquid mask that we'll be able to peel off later on after we get done. And I have to say, even just in just black, it looks like a really cool looking vehicle. So now what I thought I would do is something a little bit different. I think what we'll do now is we'll try to paint this vehicle up in a couple of different types of paint job just to kind of show you guys uh, some different ways of uh, putting it on there. So let's go ahead and start putting some paint on this. Okay guys, the first one we're gonna build up or paint paint up I should say, is a, uh, a winter camouflage that I've always kind of wanted to do. And this one, as you can see right here, we've just taken some masking tape and gone over and done a bunch of geometric shapes with it. Very random and odd. And um, I gotta push some of this tape down before we start painting, but I just started putting some on and I thought, 
kind of reminiscent of if you guys are into rock and roll music, uh, Eddie Van Halen's original black and white uh, Franken uh, Strat, and kind of, kind of similar to that. So I started doing that. We're going to give this a try and see how it comes out. And of course, we're going to paint this in a couple of different varieties of color. And first we're going to do, obviously we've got the black on there already, and now we're going to go over it with some white. Now we won't be doing any weathering at all once again because this is going to be strictly a prototype modern tank that you would imagine to be clean. So let's go ahead. We'll finish pushing all the tape down, put a little bit more maybe on in a few areas that I see some, some big areas, and we'll go and spray the white. Yeah, there it is, guys. There is our winter geometric pattern, uh, a la Frankenstrat from Eddie Van Halen. The original one, I know he made the other one with the red, but the original one was the black and white. And it's actually kind of a cool pattern. Now, uh, we probably could have went ahead and airbrushed uh, or done a little bit better job on the masking, but this was just kind of to play around with, just to give you guys a general idea. We're going to paint over all of this right now and change it into a another type of vehicle. But... I do like it, and it, um, it's something that I might even consider in the near future to do on a regular vehicle to keep it that way, because it it's different. And I could see how that would be broken up as a silhouette, you know, from a far-off vehicle with the black and white, especially in uh, Northern Europe. It looks kind of cool like that. Okay, guys, the next paint job we're going to have some fun playing around with is we're going to do a chrome paint job on this tank. Now, I've gone ahead and sprayed the entire model with a gloss black and probably should have done the chrome one first because I forgot completely when we did all the masking on the first one, you can still see some of the mask lines in there. But this is all about uh, having fun and we're going to see how it turns out anyway after we put those on. Maybe we can put some stripes of some other colors on there and match up some of the other pattern on it. But uh, uh, normally we wouldn't be painting multiple paint jobs over the same vehicle, but we're going to give this one a try and just see how it works. So we're going to use uh, some extreme metal from AK Interactive, and we're going to put a coat of that on right now. And here it is, guys. Here's what it looks like all painted up in chrome to give you an idea of it. Now, clearly, we're just having some fun with this whole model kit and just painting up in some weird ways. And like I said, I probably should have done the uh, the masking one last since we have some slight little masking marks inside there. But like I said, we're just having fun. It's quarantine time. We're all locked up uh, at homes. And I wanted to try some unusual uh, ways of painting this tank, and we certainly did. Now, uh, I could probably even probably go ahead and paint it yet again and do some other weird type of combinations to it. And I might even mess around with this and put like some blue stripes, some blue and chrome I think would be kind of cool together. Uh, but this is just to give you an idea that you can have some fun even when you're locked up at home for a very long time like we all are. And uh, But this is a great model. It goes together very easily. And of course you can paint it in any way you want to because it's your model and you're supposed to be having some fun with it. So there you go guys. I want to thank you as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.